Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Crypto Siege with another day in the life <laughs> and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good, uh, good evening, I should say, to you, right? Happy Friday. Uh, a little bit of a recovery in the market, it looks like. I just recently, I think I saw BTC at 10.5. So that's, I, uh, that's great to see, I guess. Um, we'll see. I don't know if the, the four for a dollar thing is still going on on XRP. Um, I doubt it though, but I don't know. I let, me, let me check that for you guys. Let's see what find it. This one I can just go right over here and check. Uh, yeah, 10.5. So XRP is probably yeah, 25, 25 cents still, 25 and a half cents. That's still not too bad. It's still kind of four for a dollar range ish. Uh, but in any case, the market is kind of doing some recovery. Guys, listen, I'm going to hop on here. I'm going to share a couple of articles from, um, from Twitter, from James Bull XRP, and um, from uh, you today, just to kind of keep you guys updated on what's going on in the market. Uh, I will tell you this. Uh, it's Friday. I don't know if I'll have a chance to get on here later for a stream or not. Uh, we shall see. It depends on what Miss Crypto Siege wants to do. Uh, guys, uh, do me a favor. And uh, if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at crypto underscore siege, crypto underscore siege. If you're a safe Facebook person, uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook at the crypto siege, the crypto siege. And for all the friends out there in the podcast world, if you join the podcast, uh, we do have a podcast. It is on uh, all the major podcasts, whether they Stitcher or Spotify or iTunes. And that is the crypto siege as well, C-E-E-J the crypto siege. All right, guys, so listen, this is your XRP Ripple daily news and the round <laughs> zero to 10 minutes. So let's do this. So shout out to James Rule XRP. My dude, big time community member, uh, always continues to add value to the community. We appreciate what you do, my friend. We appreciate all your hard work every single day to add value to this community. So you guys, guys, this is something that he tweeted out here. It says, uh, if you want to follow James Rule, by the way, it's at Rule XRP, a definite follow on Twitter to keep you up to date on all things digital assets, but especially XRP. So sending, uh, what does it say? Senate banking chair says, U.S. should lead in crypto innovations. Nice picture there of Mike uh, Crapo, Crapo, Crapo. Let's go over the uh, article on modernconsensus.com. It was a pretty good read. Uh, it has uh, Brian Brooks next to him here. Senator Mike Crabo wants acting control of the currency, Brian Brooks, to create clear rules of the road. Clear rules of the road. Kind of like clarity for the cryptocurrency industry. How about that? And I know we've seen a lot of stuff today on YouTube, people sharing. Um, a recent event with uh, Brian Brooks and uh, a lady, I don't remember her name, some really, really good stuff. But, but look, this guy, Brian Brooks has his finger on the pulse that is going on in the digital asset space. I think that Mnuchin specifically put them in place for a reason, for a reason. And I believe it's to move forward this new financial system that President Donald Trump signed and his new exec, uh, his executive order, 13772. This is the guy, and they didn't pick a traditional finance guy to be at the OCC, uh, in essence, right? They picked a guy coming from the crypto space. Not that Brian Brooks doesn't have uh, a background, right? Because he was in the banking business as well, right? I believe he partnered at one time with Mnuchin, uh, with one West Bank or West Bank, something like that, right? So, um, but I think they know we're moving forward into this new asset class that is a digital asset space. And they need a bulldog that's going to move forward <laughs> and making this happen. And I do believe that's Brian Brooks. So Senate banking chair, the United States should lead in crypto innovation. Senator Mike Kreb Preppel took note of former base lawyer Brian Brooks' activity at the Office of the Control of the Currency and moving to create clear rules of the road for the digital asset industry. The United States should take the lead in developing a robust digital asset ecosystem. Senate Banking Committee Chair Mike Crapo, Senate Banking Committee, all right, said in a September 1 letter to Brian Brooks, acting chief of the Treasury Department of the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Uh, and it's, it is also, you know, 
Uh, it's also important to note that uh, uh, the control of the OCC is part of the treasury. Mnuchin pretty much runs that treasury now. Who left his position as chief legal officer, Brooks, who left his position as the chief legal officer of the cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase to take up the reins at OCC, has been active in helping industry make nice with banks that have long avoided it. Notably in July, the OCC published a letter making clear that the banks and federal savings associations, it charters, regulates, and supervisors are allowed to provide custody service for digital assets. Crapel said that in the light of that, it would be prudent to provide similar clarity for payments. The digital asset industry is as diverse in its products and functions as the rest of financial services he said, adding the U.S. should develop clear rules of the road that protect, protect businesses and consumers without stifling future innovation. And I believe this Crepo guy is the same guy that um, puts, put together some of the, uh, one of those blockchain initiatives. I believe he was in that as well with Soto. I believe so. Those innovations, say Crapo or Crapo, are innova uh, inevitable and beneficial and the u.s should be a leader in developing them All right hey baby the banking committee has held hearings on digital asset and digital digital digitalization in the payments system including the impact of distributed ledger technology blockchain and stable coins Crapel said noting that the OCC on the Brooks has taken the lead in seeking input from banks on a variety of areas important to financial technology and digital, digital currency issuers. Crypto, uh, Crapo asked Brooks to provide an update on what are the next steps the OCC plans to take. Specifically, Crapo asked the OCC for an update on what it heard in four areas from banks in the wake of a June 4 advance, June 4th advance notice of proposed rulemaking. And these are what activities related to digital assets or crypto assets or financial services companies or bank customers engaged in and what are the barriers or obstacles to further adoption of crypto related activities in the banking industry. How is distributed ledger technology used or potentially used in activities related to banking? What new payments technologies and processes should the OCC be aware of? And what are the potential impl implications of these technologies and processes for the banking industry? What new or innovative tools do financial services companies use? to comply with regulations and supervisory expectations. And so, so the Senator from the Senate Banking Committee obviously has been paying attention to what Brian Brooks from the OCC is doing. And I do think that this is important, especially to kind of get some backing uh, from Congress on that stuff, right? You know, he, he wants to have some people who are gonna have his back moving forward. Uh, not that he doesn't have um, a blank check, if you will. Not that he doesn't have uh, you know, a lot of leeway to make moves, but it would certainly help if you got some people from Congress uh, to be backing and people like Tom Emmer, right? And now you got this Senator Mike Crapo as well. So I think this is important because uh, Brian Brooks from the OCC is obviously very crypto friendly, recognizes, 1000% recognizes that there is technology available <laughs> Uh, to get us faster or get us closer to real time payments, right? And so he is leading the charge and I'm, I'm excited that Brian Brooks is leading the charge and I'm really excited that it looks like he has another person from Congress that is looking to um, support him and align with him in um, ideas and concepts like the United States should lead in crypto innovations, right? So that's very, very significant to note. I'm gonna share something as well, and I think this is, you know, digital assets, right? Binance, this is from XRP DX at Hardly, oh, this is Hardly Hot, Hodler. What's going on, my friend? <laughs> Thank you for sharing. You did, you did, you did tag me in this. I appreciate that, bro. 
Uh, says Binance takes on DeFi with Uniswap competitor and liquidity mining. Binance getting into this space is, uh, you know, getting into the DeFi space is going to be, <laughs> is going to be massive. There was some guy on Twitter that did a really, really nice write up on CZ. Uh, CZ. Uh, and I, I think I have it not here and tapped up, but I think I did save it. Very, very interesting article about CZ. Wow. Interesting, interesting guy. But the fact that they're looking, they are going, not looking, they are going into the DeFi space. Uh, finance into the DeFi space is absolutely going to be massive. Thanks for sharing this, Hartley Holler. I appreciate you, brother. And uh, if you guys want to follow Hartley Holler on Twitter, it's at Hartley, under, Hartley like in the motorcycles, underscore Hodler. All right, so let, let, I'm not going to go through this article too much here from Coin Telegraph, but Binance takes on DeFi with Uniswap competitor and liquidity mining. Crypto exchange giant Binance makes another move into DeFi with new token swapping liquidity platform. Interesting stuff here, I got to tell you. The crypto exchange giant Binance is delving deeper into the world of DeFi style products with its latest offering, an automated market maker called Binance Liquid uh, Swap, aimed directly at Uniswap and its clones. Binance will launch an AMM liquidity pool that allows users to provide liquidity by depositing tokens, just like the world's most popular decentralized exchange. Binance Liquid Swap will also enable users to earn interest in addition to a cut of the trading fees for the pool. Yep. Look, look, Alex Mashinsky said this earlier today in the AMA. Look, what, what Celsius is doing, Celsius.network is doing, is uh, telling the world, right? Telling the banks, telling these exchanges, uh, you're going to have to come up with a model that provides yield to platform holders. <laughs> and so, because uh, Celsius is doing it in a major way, paying back 80% of what they get to the platform holders. And so these exchanges are, they're copying everything that Celsius Network does. <laughs> they, they, they all are copying them. They all are trying to do what Celsius is doing. Now that's great for you and I. Now listen, they don't come close to the yield net net, but at least they're not keeping, at least they're in, um, trying to keep up with Celsius, which means they're trying to, by default, give you and I more yield, more uh, interest on our assets. Uh, so, you know, this is very, uh, it's a direct, it's in direct proportion, proportion to what Celsius is doing it, it, it directly because Celsius with a billion dollars assets on the million uh, assets on the management and close to 2 billion in loans, if not over 2 billion in loans, providing 80% of this interest back to you and I, the platform holders, these exchanges look, cause we, we're taking our stuff off of exchanges, right? We're putting them on platforms like the Celsius now, right? So these plat these exchanges are trying to hold on, trying to hang on <laughs> uh, and coming up with different things because uh, in my humble opinion, the soundest and safest way, uh, one of the best ways to earn assets, to earn on your assets is in the Celsius network without question. So shout out to Binance for trying to keep his market share, right? Because people, you know, people are kind of leaving, right? And so, right, uh, as far as leaving their assets, they may still go there and purchase, right? But as far as leaving, right, nothing, there isn't a platform out there, you know, it's just not that pays the amount of interest that the Celsius network does. Not, not Binance, not Binance US. I love Binance US, but they just don't pay the yield that um, the Celsius network does. And by the way, I am an, an ambassador for the Celsius Network and prou proudly so. And um, I was always a link in the description of every single video that I do without question about the Celsius platform. You, you guys know you can reach out to me on Twitter at crypto underscore siege if you have any questions or if you're having any issues uh, with anything going on with your Celsius wallet app. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. It, it's, it's an honor to be able to um, help you and provide service for you if you're having any challenges uh, at all with that app. So don't hesitate to do that. So I just wanted to point that out because Alex, Alex said, look, he's got major competition. Uh, influence of being paid, not to mention Celsius, right? right, right. Um, um, uh, what is these, these news articles, platforms, um, or, you know, 
that are, some are on the side of BTC people, some are on the side of these banks, some are on the side of, you know, these VC backed things like maybe a Nexo or a BlockFi that is VC backed. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a war right now. They have Celsius has major competition. They have major people trying to compete. I should say, I don't think they have any competition. And uh, yeah, I love the way he points that out. All right, guys. So listen, I'm going to share this. I think this is something interesting <laughs> uh, from Baba Cogs. Hilarious. Anytime actual bankers validate a new financial system correlated to gold, no high profile accounts in the community discuss it. Why is that? Because it proves Baba and Riddlers are right. This is what happens when people talk too early. <laughs> this is an interesting article here from Zero Hedge, from a former central banker. The world is heading towards a new monetary system. Zerohedge.com, this is a really good write-up. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it was kind of a Q&A, but it looks like this guy, Tyler Durden, um, he's got some other interesting articles as well. And this, this is very well nicely put together, um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background on him. It says the introduction well, let me read the whole thing. An interview with Penty. Okay, I can't pronounce that one. I'm just going to call that guy Penty. He's the former central bank, uh, head of the Central Bank of Finland. When it comes to the development of the price of gold, it's important to know in what direction the international monetary system is evolving. For example, if gold is assigned a greater role in a forthcoming arrangement, not only will the price of gold rise while approaching that arrangement, the price increase will be sustained during that arrangement. <clears throat> According to my analysis, the world is heading towards a new monetary system that incorporates gold. Although I do not know how that system will be structured, to get a per better perspective, I decided to interview Penty, former head of banking operations, okay, head of banking operations at the Central Bank of Finland, member of the Vo Voma Gold Advisory Board and professor of practice at the University of Oulu in Finland. Penty thinks we are moving toward a multi-reserve currency system. Multi-reserve currency system. All right, so I'm just gonna go over a couple of these questions and I'm gonna wrap this video up for you guys. But this was an interview between um, uh, Tyler and Penty, okay? The former head of operations for the Central Bank of Finland. So the first question was, do you think it was a mistake for Europe to launch the Euro? It was a big mistake to start the Euro area with a large number of countries. Moreover, the convergence criteria was not strictly applied. The Euro was an experiment and we should have been much more careful. We should have started with a small set of countries like Germany, France, Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. The door should have been closed for other countries for at least 20 years. Well, how about that? Interesting. Uh, was the Euro launched to break dollar dominance? That argument, says Penty, is partly true. But to challenge the dollar, the development of the Euro had to be a great success, which it is not. Do you think the current international monetary system is sustainable? Mr. Penty says no. I believe that we are moving towards a multi-reserve currency system in which gold, the dollar, and the euro and other currencies take part, right? Fiat, you know, for me, if, you know, we said a lot of times in the channel, it kind of feels like to us that the fiat is going to be backed by gold. They're bringing gold back in some way, shape, form, fashion. I am a great fan of the floating exchange rate regime. It usually works well for large and small economies. For many countries, a too rigid exchange rate is a problem. These are exceptions. There are exceptions like Denmark. Uh, well, let me see if I'll, uh... Do you think it will be sensible or doable that gold would be officially reintroduced into the international mining system? Mr. Penty says, I think all serious central banks hold gold in their reserves. Kind of dodging around the question there, trying to answer it without kind of giving it away. I think all serious central bank hold gold in their reserves. There is no need to give advice to good central bankers. 
<laughs> they know what to do. Other central bankers will follow. Yeah, will follow. So guys, listen, that is some very, very interesting stuff. Let's keep our XLP radar antennas up uh, so that we can pay more and more attention to this. But again, I do believe that Marvin Gaye chart uh, that he shared with the AIB and the HSBC uh, and SWIFT uh, with, gold, with gold being back with this new friend. I just, it's to me, is coming more and more to fruition every single day. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. That old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. <laughs> the digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sideline? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.